So in today's video I'm going to share what I did and what I still do to keep my digestive problems under control and how some menopause symptoms may actually be linked to our digestive problems. And if you stay till the end I'll be sharing how you can use something like this to help you with your digestive problems. So why do we experience digestive problems during menopause? Like all menopause symptoms, the biggest trigger is of course lower estrogen and other female hormones. This can mean that our digestive system slows down so we feel sluggish, we feel bloated, we go through constipation and sometimes diarrhea. And for some women they may lose their appetite or for some they may start having sugar cravings and other cravings for foods that they never used to have any cravings for. Also, lower estrogen levels affects the production of our stomach acid and digestive enzymes which can slow down the rate at which our food gets digested and this may be one reason why you feel uncomfortable after eating and why your food might feel like it's just sitting in your stomach and not being digested. Our nervous system also have estrogen receptors which may mean that when you feel really stressed you may feel like you've lost your appetite. And although you may not associate your digestive problems as causing other menopause symptoms, because of the gut and brain axis your digestive problems may actually be the root cause of your mood issues such as your brain fog, your anxiety, depression, allergies, mood and immune disorders. So what did I do and still do to keep my digestive problems under control? The first thing I did was to cut back on wheat and gluten foods. Gluten is basically a protein that our digestive enzymes and stomach acid find really hard to digest. So instead of being digested, it ferments causing bloating, constipation and pain which were the symptoms that I got. Gluten may trigger immune issues in certain sensitive people who may then end up with digestive health issues such as celiac disease, leaky gut and other digestive health issues. If you want to know what sort of foods may be triggering your digestive problems, keeping a diary or a journal might really help you. So take note of when you do have whether constipation, bloating, pain, diarrhea. If you write that down in a diary or a journal and then think back to the types of food that you ate that might have triggered it, you'll have a better idea of what may be triggering or causing your digestive problems. You can then decide whether you want to keep eating those foods or maybe having those foods is just not worth going through days of constipation, diarrhea, bloating or pain. I have reduced my intake of breads and pastas. If I do have pasta I will have gluten free pasta and a lot of the time if I do have bread it will only be at the weekend and not very often. The second thing I do to keep my digestive problems under control is to support my stomach acid and digestive enzymes. I don't know if you've heard of the phrase you are what you digest and absorb. We can eat the best, most healthiest organic foods. If we don't have sufficient stomach acid and digestive enzymes, we won't be able to get the optimum nutrition out of the foods that we're eating. So I started taking digestive enzymes and I found that digestive enzymes really helped with my digestion and calming down my digestive problems. Now this isn't something that I'm advising you to do because I know that I don't have any health issues that I need to worry about or I need to think about when it comes to contraindications. This might not be the same for you and you may have medications or you may have health issues which means that digestive enzymes may not be suitable for you. And like everything else that I say on this channel, if you do have symptoms that you're worried about, you should go and see your doctor to make sure that he or she 
can assess whether your symptoms need further investigations and if you do want to start taking digestive enzymes or making any changes in your diet and lifestyle do see a nutritional therapist or someone who is properly qualified to give you nutritional advice and although i have taken digestive enzymes in the past and i still do when my digestive problems get really bad it's not something that i do on a regular basis and that's because of the next few tips that i'm going to give you and before i share these tips if you are getting benefits from the information i've shared so far i'd love it if you hit the like button so youtube knows to share this information with other women who may benefit from the information I share here. And it also helps the channel grow, so I really thank you for doing that. And if these are the sort of information that you think may help you through your perimenopause or your menopause journey, consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you'll get notified when I've uploaded another video. So what do I do instead of relying on digestive enzyme supplements? I use apple cider vinegar and bitter foods in my diet to help support my digestion. Our stomach acid is normally very acidic and this has several roles. One is to support our digestion and digest our foods. It's also needed to keep the sphincter at the top of our stomach closed and that way it prevents your stomach contents from coming back up your esophagus and causing heartburn. The way I use apple cider vinegar is that I use it mostly on my salads as a salad dressing. We need to have good levels of stomach acid to support the release of other digestive enzymes. And my salads tend to be the bitter variety because bitter foods is meant to stimulate our other digestive enzymes. The other important thing about having good stomach acid levels is that if we can't break our food into small enough particles, we may not be getting the nutrients from the food that we're eating. Signs that you may not be absorbing the nutrients from the food that you're eating include iron deficiency, poor hair, nail and skin conditions, feeling hungry all the time and fatigue. I also add probiotic foods such as sauerkraut and kefir yogurt in my menopause diet. These foods support the beneficial bacteria in your gut and has helped to calm the pain and the spasms that I used to get as part of my digestive problems. These probiotic foods are also naturally acidic or have a low pH, which again helps with digestion. When you start adding more probiotic foods in your diet, or if you haven't had probiotic foods in your diet for a while, you may find that your bloating increases. But as your gut bacteria finds its natural balance with all the probiotic foods that you're eating, eventually the bloating will hopefully subside. The fourth way that I reduce my digestive problems is having lots of vegetables and fibre rich foods. I would tend to use cruciferous vegetables or other vegetables as a side dish instead of having something like rice, breads or potatoes or pasta. And also fibre is really good to helping regulate your bowel movements and ease constipation. The other thing that I do to help take control of my digestive problems is to get active. Our digestive tract moves food through our digestive system through an action called peristalsis. When we're sitting down a lot, our stomach and our digestive tract may be squashed, which can slow down our digestion, leading to sluggishness, bloating, constipation, and other digestive problems. By being more active, you're supporting the peristaltic movements of your digestive system, helping to regulate your bowel movements and helping to move your food down your digestive tract. I found that all these strategies really help me to keep my digestion going. It's decreased my bloating, my constipation, I actually go to the loo regularly once or twice a day and I have less bloating, I've lost weight 
and I no longer rely on digestive enzyme supplements. As we're talking about digestion and digestive problems, one of the things that I do is that I drink lots of water and I always start the day off with around 200 ml of warm water as well as having around five to six pints of water spaced out through the day. As promised, I'll now share how this spiky ball may help with your digestive problems. Every evening you'll find me in front of the television rolling this ball underneath my feet. Not only does this little ball help me with my digestion and bloating, because I roll it around the reflex points of my adrenal glands, it will really help to relax me for restful sleep. However, if you don't like someone touching your feet or you can't afford to see a reflexologist, you can get one of these balls to do the work instead. It may not be as relaxing or as effective as seeing a reflexologist, but you may find that it's enough to give you relief from your digestive problems. And I'll put a link in the description down below where you can get one of these balls. So remember to check out the description. Now if you'd like to know how adding more probiotic foods in your menopause diet may help with your digestive problems as well as other menopause symptoms, check out this video.